Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Wherever you are, whatever the time is, welcome to Prophetic Voice of Victory broadcast. I am uh, your host, Apostle James Duncan. Today, uh, uh, my co-host, Prophetess Marcy Miles Jenkins, is on our way to the place of our birth, uh, uh, England, in London, England. Praise God. So remember her in prayer, remember her family in prayer. She's gone to some events, and God is going to use her greatly. Remember, praise God. I, I, I'm so glad today to be here. Um, it's for a while. I have not been in solo, so I'm remembering the times when uh, I was there. Amen. So as you come on, tag your friends, share with your groups, and let them know the prophet, prophetic voice of victory is on. Praise God. Uh, we, we began Monday to talk about Jesus speaking to Peter to launch out in the deep. Launch out in the deep. And as yesterday, we began to talk about, and the day before, we began to talk about that Jesus uh, saying to Peter, let down your nets, and Peter let down his net. And so we're going to talk about, uh, we spoke about ob uh, partial obedience is disobedience. Partial obedience is disobedience. When God tells you to do something, do it. When God says you are, you are a prophet, you're an apostle, you're a teacher, you're a doctor, you're a professor, you are whatever it is, you're a journeyman, you're a carpenter, you are even you're a tax collector you are a, uh, you are a john whatever he says you are you are i remember i remember myself that i had to repent like like peter had to repent i had to repent when uh, when god said to me that i called it to be a prophet to the nations 1981 living in the nation of guyana where i was born and 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 there was no one in the church realm uh, 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 that were known as prophets because in those times it was it was pastors and evangelists and teachers uh, mostly pastors and evangelists that was what was taking place in those days and so when god said to me you i called to be a prophet to the nations i doubted like peter doubted because i began to come from my from my own understanding and from my own uh, experiencings and from my own uh, 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 assessment of things that taken place and what I believe and what was, uh, what was taught, I didn't know. So I said, God, and he said, I've got to be a prophet to the nations. I say, God, you mean a pastor. Same way, like Peter said, when Peter said in verse number five, uh, after Jesus said to him, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for, for a draught or a catch. And Peter says, and Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Partial obedience. And that, that I, I have the experience of that. I said, God, you mean a pastor. And then God said again, I call you to prophesy. And so because of slow of heart to believe, because of the existing circumstances that were taking place. And many of you uh, that are hearing the sound of my voice today, God has spoken to you something, but you, you operate in partial faith, in partial obedience. You've gotten instructors. You operate partially because in which your, your human capacity and your human understanding, you you cannot you could not have seen how it is possible. How it is possible? In my case, how is it possible 
that I am, uh, I am a prophet to the nations, and there is no prophet in Guyana, and there is no teaching about prophets and apostles. How it is, the only prophet and apostles they were teaching about is from the historical fact of the Word of God, but not in, in the now movement of God. So I've come to tell you, if you're part of a church that doesn't believe that they are apostles and they don't believe in prophets, some churches, some denominations, some uh, moves of God, they, they, uh, they accept apostles and prophets, but they magnify the office of the bishop. And, uh, and, and uh, uh, understanding from scripture is something else, but I want you to know, as long as God has spoken to you, what he has spoken to you shall come to pass. Because the Bible says, God says, have I, have I not spoken? And shall not I bring it to pass? If God said it, he's going to bring it to pass. He is going to perform it. All we have to do, to do is believe. So Peter believed, but there were some doubts still. He said, the circumstances I toil all night. And this was an experienced fisherman. He had a fishing business because he, he owned the boat. He owned the boat. It's like he owned a fishing business. And for you to own a fishing business, it means you have to have experience. Experience about, uh, about fishing. He had experience. But after he did not receive anything, he had another thought. You see, sometimes the faith that we uh, we started out in, faith has to be tried. The Bible says, the trying of your faith work in patience. And you are experiencing some circumstances today. And your faith is tried. Your dream is something great and large. But the, the point of your development now is, is far less than you dreamed about. You, you, some of you dream to be millionaires and multi-millionaires. Some of you dream uh, as apostles and prophets and five-fold ministry. You dream about mega church. You dream about about orchestra, you dream about great things, about feeding the hungry, and you dream things that are great. But where you are now in experience, in manifestation, is far away from what you dream about. And so the, the, the nets that when God saw them, the, 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 he saw them with their nets. It, it, he saw them washing their nets. Jesus saw them washing their nets. Washing the nets. So they were in preparation. They had the, the nets. They, they had the vision that who they want to be. If you're in business, you want to maximize. If you're in business, you're thinking about being millionaires and billionaires. If you're in business, if you're a man of God, and you see, and God is using you tremendously, or a woman of God, you're thinking with mega, mega church, mega thing, your dreams is tremendous. So the nets is, 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 a, is, is a manifestation or indication that they dream, that they came with nets because they expect the nets to be filled. And Jesus looked at the nets and said, and said to them, said to Peter, let down, Simon, your nets. You have it. You have it. You are dreaming about it. Let it down. Let it down. But then the immediate circumstance that he tried in his own strength, in his own ability, in his own vision, he tried and he catched nothing. Some of you are frustrated. At the, at, the, at the place of manifestation or development where you are. Some of you, you're praying and you see that others are getting saved. Others are being blessed, but you are not. 
Your loved ones are still struggling. You're praying for others to get healed, but your loved ones are not getting healed. Uh, the, the, you have not seen the healing and manifestation yet. You are praying for, uh, for buildings. You're praying for your city and state and nation, but you're not seeing no change yet. You're coming up empty. It seems like everything uh, is coming up empty. God knew. Because the Bible says God is omniscient. He's all-knowing. And he is the creator of heaven and earth. He is the creator of heaven and earth. He created everything. So he created the fish by his word. He created the thing that you are seeking about. The thing, the places that you want to go. The ideas that you have. God has created this universe, this world, and he created for, for us, for man. When he created the planet, he gave it to Adam and Eve. Because he said this specific thing. He created for Adam and Eve, and he gave them the authority. He said this in Genesis chapter 1. I'm trying to get to this Genesis chapter 1. This was not in what I said. My notes are supposed to go up, but... Let me get to this. Genesis chapter 1. And look at verse number. Uh, let me read quickly. Verse number 26, 27. But this is verse 27. Genesis 1, 27 says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and every, over the, every living thing that move upon the earth. And God said to them, Behold, I have given you every green. You see, God gave it to them. He said to them, He said to them, Be fruitful. He gave it after He created them. Male and female created He them, and God gave them. So this planet is for man. And so God said, Now launch out in the deep, the deep place come away from the familiarity to show life. And so God is talking to you about, you, are, you, you have some me measure of success, but the season you're in now is not a successful time for you. You had great success in times past. You've seen great things happen in times past, in, in your life, in your family, in ministry, in business in your career, your education, in your upbringing, you've seen things. But now the season you're in, you're not seeing anything happening. It seems like everything has come to a standstill, come to an end. I, 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 I've come to tell you, when things seem that they've come to an end, it's a new beginning. And so Jesus, God in flesh, know where they were saw what they were what they, they, they were doing what they experiencing he knows everything about us he's seeing everything about you and I and our families and our affairs our situations he sees everything and he knows and today he's come and said launch out into the deep move from the place that you are in because what you're looking for the catch the harvest, it is in uh, the same place that you're in, but not at that exact location. It is somewhere into the deep. You have uh, Peter, being an experienced fisherman, know where they were catching the fish, but now they have tried, and they and it seems like they have failed. Now the deep. It talks about depth. 
It talks about height. It talks about at the shoreline, not too far, you could you could step out of the boat because they, they had in those days, they, they had a, a, a machine operated boat or these propellers and these big engines. So they had to push it out and then they got to begin to use uh, their hands and do the paddle with the things. And so they were not going way out, them going out. So they had to go out into the deep. You are doing evangelisms. You are accustomed to doing it a certain place. Move to the place, another place where God is showing you or said to you. You are doing business in a certain area and a certain thing, certain things in the business. Move and do something else. Get some as a God, some other product. Move out into the deep. You have invested this and that. Now invest some more. And some things God is going to bring the increase. Amen. You are seeing that you're stuck. You've tried, you've tried, you've tried, you've tried. And nothing has happened. God, don't give up because Jesus is in you. He is in your boat. He lives inside of you. And the instructions he gave, follow them to the T. Peter disobeyed and cast net. And then the Bible said the, dead, the, the, the net began to break because what God intends for you, as long as you move into it, which is the yada, what God intends for you, as long as you make the step to fulfill what he says concerning you, the harvest is there because the harvest was there waiting for them. Remember this, the template of God, the principle of God is that man is always the last to show up. When God sends man, when God reveals to man, he has already prepared everything you, you need and the thing is waiting for you. Apostle, what you're saying. When, when God made man and he began to show him, show him where his food was. His food was there waiting already. Genesis chapter 1. Let me go back to this and then we're going to pray. Genesis chapter 1. Verse number 20 says, And God said, Behold, he said, Look, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat god said your food is there the is the food the, 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 the trees, the herbarian trees with the fruit that was created on the third day. The third day. Because it is God that is, is, is doing the thing. He is our provider. He is Jaira. He is our provider. And this is Je Jehovah Jaira speaking to Peter. Launch out, the, the, let down your nets into the deep and let down your net for a catch. And he doubted. He stepped out in little faith. He stepped out in faith. But when the harvest that is meant for nets come into this, uh, this, this the net, they begin, it begin to break. So when the net is going to break, perhaps some fish, God, the harvest, the two harvests that he wanted, that God pre-planned for him, perhaps some of them escaped. And you can lose when you do not step in total obedience to the word of God. You can lose harvest. You can get less than God intended for you to get. He made man the sixth day and said, your food was there waiting for the third day. Whatever God says to us, 
the thing is waiting for us to get there. It is waiting. You said this it, it, money, it is waiting. Souls, they are waiting. When he said go and, 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 and evangelize, the souls are waiting. You said go and make the investment. Everything, the harvest, the success is waiting. Because when God said it, it is already completed. And so God in his divine providence and wisdom, he created trees and everything on the third day, the third day. And then he made man in the seventh, sixth day. And so everything that was there waiting, man is always the last to show up. So when God sends you someplace, he has already prepared the harvest for you. When he said, go here, go there, do this, and the harvest is there. And we saw, we saw, we witnessed in the word of God. When they, when, they, when they pull up the net, the net began to bro, break. So he had a command. He had to ask his partners, which was James and John, his, his fellow disciples and fellow apostles. He had to ask for help, ask for help. And this ship began to sink of the overwhelming, tremendous, enormous harvest that God had planned for them. God has planned a tremendous harvest. The Bible says he daily loaded us with benefit. There, there, there is loaded benefits for you today. It is loaded, loaded. Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly so we have to stop thinking about what we have and what we can do and what we can generate according to our finite thinking lack of capacity we have to think god god ways god resources that's what the bible says let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, the mind of Christ. We have to think on limitedness, on limitedness. Always think not according to your resources, your abilities, your understanding, but think in terms of God, the creator of our Lord Jesus that is speaking to you today. So what has he said to you to do? What has he given to you to do? When he spoke to me and said, uh, I call it to be a prophet to the nations, I doubted. I said, me, me the pastor. So he had, he had to manifest through me with dreams and visions. And I was seeing things that I never see before and see them come to pass, even appear in the news. Then I had to repent, like Peter had to repent. Repent. When he saw that the things broke, the harvest was so plenteous, he repented. What do you have to repent? Whatever God has said to you, and you think it, it, it was not so, because of your circumstances, because of what you were experiencing, he's a provider. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's a provider and you think he can't provide for you. Could the enemy make you believe that he can't, with some doubt, he can't provide for you today at this moment, what you're experiencing, if it's sickness, disease, poverty, lack, if it's the church is going to shut down, is souls are not coming, people are not getting saved, you're not seeing healings, you're going out and no one is coming. You're on social media, you're on television and radio, you're not seeing the harvest. What is the instructions that Jesus has given to you? Do it. it might, in your human understanding, you, you might not understand why or how it can happen, but do it. Do it. 
the Bible says, be ye doers of your, your word and not hearers only. Do it. Do it today. Do it. Step out in faith today. Step out in faith now. Whatever is confronting you is already being defeated. 2,000 years ago, after Jesus died on the cross, paid a price for sin, sickness, disease, poverty, everything the devil brought into man. We, he paid a price for prosperity, for riches. The Bible said he became poor that we might become rich. He paid the price. After he died on the cross, was buried, the third he rose again from the dead. Now he is ascended to heaven and he's making intercessions for us to see his will manifest concerning us. Jesus is interceding for you today. Men and women of God, children of God, he is interceding for you. That his will, his yada, is going to manifest in your life and in your family. Interceding. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He loved us. That's why he gave up his life for us. He did not commit sin. He knew no sin. But he paid the price for us. So today, as a child of God, imagine he died when we were sinners, when we were his enemies. But and today, that we are his children, we are his sons and daughters, we are his leaders. What he's not, he's not gonna do for us because he did it already. So you're coming into a new day of progress and a new day of deliverance. You're coming into a new day of breakthroughs and a new day of harvest. You're coming into the day of plenty because you are you have come into a day of a new horizon that the, uh, the, 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 uh, the sun of righteousness has arisen with healing in the winds. You're coming into a day of, of great healing and wealth and prosperity, but you have to obey. And as you obey, you're going to begin to see not only the sky is the limit, you're going to begin to see perpetual increase and the favor of God multiply even into your lives. For these are the days of favor and these are the days of strength and these are the days of great increase for even like the day of Pentecost, said the Lord, that uh, 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 that my spirit move was released uh, like a rushing mighty will and fill all the house where they were sitting. I've come today to fill your bonds. I've come today to fill your life. I've come to cause progress and breakthroughs to come into your life because your farming days are over. Your days of emptiness and non-achievement are over. The days of breakthroughs and the harvest has come. And as you believe me, said the Lord, and you implement that which I've spoken concerning you, you're going to see the harvest, you're going to see the breakthrough. For some of you, I've called to be writers. I've called to, that you will testify in books and you have hesitated. You have not uh, moved into what I'm saying for the you to do. If Beloved, if you do it, you're going to see the manifestation like Peter saw, you're going to see. For these are the days of a new horizon, new horizon. You've come to a new day, into a new season, into a new orbit, and I've caused a breakthrough to take place, even in your life, said the Lord. For I, the Lord my God, shall perform it, and I have performed it for you. Don't doubt, don't doubt, said the Lord of hosts. Don't doubt, step out, don't doubt. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And you that have never received Christ as your Savior, or, 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 or you're backslidden, today is the day for you to come to Jesus. Come, come to him and come back to him. He is the creator of heaven and Lord. 
He's the source of life and life that more abundantly. The source of life and that more abundantly. God was uh, was moving Peter and moved them into a new season, into a new era, into a new time. It was a new beginning for him. All that he knew and understood had come to an end. Now he's had to move with what God knows and God provided. And he is Jehovah Jireh. He's your provider. He's our provider. He has already provided for us. Walk in this provision by faith. And you will see the manifestation of the sight of what God has said. He said, let there be light. In the dark season, there was light. You're going to see the manifestation and the breakthroughs. Amen. For you who have never received Christ as your Savior and as Max Lynn, you're, you're coming to Christ. You're coming to the Creator of heaven and earth, the source. God is the source of life. He's our Heavenly Father. If you're ready, repeat this. Say, say, say with me, Lord Jesus, I come to you as a sinner. I come to you as a backslider. Forgive me for my sins, Lord. Wash me in your blood and cleanse me. Come into my heart and come into my life and rule in my heart and rule in my life from this day forward. In your name I pray, Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you said that prayer, you believe it. The Bible calls you, it said you're born again or means, it means that you're regimed from above. You have the genes of our Lord Jesus and the, dream, the, the, the genes of our Heavenly Father, His Heavenly fa Father. We have the genes of God today. We are His offspring. So we can do what He can do. Amen. And so but you have to be a part of a Bible-believing church or a church that preaches the entire counsel of God because the Bible is our instruction manual. A church, of, And we are such a church. Amen. You can join us every Friday night at 7.30, 7.30. We're going to start all night prayer for on Friday night, so join us. Because Jesus prayed all night, and things begin to happen. Now, Fridays at 7.30, and Sunday morning at 10 a.m. at 91-20, 9120 146th Street in Jamaica, Queens. You're in Queens, Jamaica. Every place, come and join us. Bring the sick, bring the lame, bring the halt. Uh, 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 one of the sisters uh, that I knew from Guyana came. Uh, she's almost 90 with stage 4 cancer. And God healed her. Almost 90 years old. He can heal. Cancer was defeated. Diabetes is defeated. Hypertension is defeated. Anything, all diseases were defeated and destroyed over 2,000 years ago. When Jesus took stripes, by stripes we are healed. Poverty, it was defeated. Come. The, the, I can't sleep. I can't just come. Jesus is going to heal, going to deliver, going to save and resurrect. So join us 7.30. Sunday, uh, Friday, and now again at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning, 91-20-146 Street, Jamaica, Queens. And Prophetess Mercy, Miles Jenkins, amen. Co-host, she, she, uh, every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m., uh, she be at the Clarion Hotel, Fireside Room, 1080 Riverdale Street, West Springfield, in Massachusetts. The zip is 01089. Join her. Join them there. And God is going to change you. Amen. Today you want to sow seed. You say, ah, it's going to be $7 in the multiple seven months. We're coming to the end of this month, the seventh month, the month of rest, the month of completion, the number seven's completion, the month of it is finished. The month, it is finished. Completion. The eighth month is a new beginning. So today, sow a seed. If you sow it, God is going to grow it. My cash app is there. Prophetess Morsi Cash App is going to be there. It is dollar sign JC and Duncan 2. And Prophetess Morsi Cash App is 
is is dollar sign Aaron A A R O N and uppercase N Mercy Aaron lowercase A A A R O N and uppercase N Mercy lowercase God bless you we love you and Jesus loves you and Jesus is Lord Shalom Shalom